Mr. Adney, has justice been served here? Not at all. This is shameful. Shameful experience today. The U.S. government made an offer that Omar couldn't refuse. That was that they, he, they would cap any sentence at eight years, and they assured him that he would only have to spend at the most a year in Guantanamo Bay, and in assuring him, they sent diplomatic notes to the Canadian government, asking the Canadian government to agree to this, that Omar Khadr would come back to Canada after one year. And as of yesterday, I was giving a diplomatic note, a Canadian diplomatic note that said that Canada was inclined, that was the language it used, to agree with the United States um, proposal. But what does that mean? What is Canada offering back? What Canada is saying is we will take all my Canada back to Canada to, rem to serve the, remaining of the remainder of the sentence after one year in Guantanamo Bay, subject to Canadian law. How emotional was this for Omar Carter when he had to make this decision? It was horrible for him. I mean, it got even worse today, for example, Carol. In court today, they added two more charges that we'd never heard of. And it seems to be that he's responsible for everybody who got injured or killed in that fight at the, in the compound with the Taliban. So two more murder charges we'd never heard of were added into the list of things he has to be guilty to. And tomorrow, he's, there's a statement of fact that's going to be read out, which will make him sound like he is some serial killer, that he is the right-hand man of bin Laden, that he is a jihadist of extreme ideological views. But indeed, what was he? And what, he was a young man of 15 years of age who was on a battlefield for two months, placed there by his father. Among the language I understand he has to sign into is that he was a, he's an alien, unprivileged enemy belligerent. What does that mean? If I thought that if, oh, the Americans have made up the rules and the law, new rules and the law of war. These charges that Omar faces with are unknown under the laws of war. The Americans made them up in order to justify detaining people who didn't wear a uniform in the battlefields of Afghanistan. And I've often said over the years, can someone tell me what uniform the Northern Alliance was wearing when it, when it joined the Americans in attacking the Taliban? So it, it's all smoke and mirrors here. So why has he agreed to accept this plea deal then? He's agreed to accept this plea deal because when he looks at the alternatives, and the alternatives is that he's in a military process that has been, as you would be aware, has been internationally condemned. It's a process that has been condemned by military prosecutors themselves who say that it is designed to make findings of guilt. He faced it the potential of life imprisonment under the system here because the jury is handpicked, as the judge is handpicked, as the prosecution is handpicked, and as the military is handpicked, the military defense is handpicked. And then I think what really capped it all off was much of the evidence against Omar are statements that he made while being abused and tortured and, and under duress. So the cards were stacked. And so he had to make a decision where he gets a chance to come home after one year, get out of this hellhole, or take the risk of being here for the rest of his life. And that was a very real risk. And if we had been in his shoes, which one of us would not have jumped as well?